The following program is sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. Welcome to another project here on Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show well, we'll take a closer look at the challenges the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewer District is facing and how these challenges impact virtually everyone in the greater Milwaukee area. So let's get started with Bill Graffin from MMSD. Well, Bill, this is a pretty impressive looking operation up here. What are we looking at? We're at the Jones Island Water Reclamation Facility in Milwaukee. This is one of two treatment plants for the region. MMSD, we serve 28 communities, about 1.1 million people. Wow, 28 communities. So we're talking the greater Milwaukee area, virtually any community around here. It's gonna feed their sewage down to this plant eventually. Any water that you flush or pour down the drain will end up at one of these plants where we'll clean it and return it to Lake Michigan. Okay. Let's get right to it. I'm taking a shower, dirty water going down the drain. Say I live out in West Allis. Walk me through where that water travels. You, if you own a house, own a sewer pipe. You're part of the system. That pipe takes water from your shower, your sink, your toilet, out to the street where it connects to the city sewer system. All 28 communities we serve own and operate their own sewer systems. So that's 3,000 miles of sewer pipe that the communities own another 3,000 miles of laterals in this overall system. And then the community's pipes go to the MMSD system, the regional system. We own and operate about 300 miles of sewer pipe, which transport all the water to one of the two treatment plants for the region. That's a lot of miles of pipe in there. So when we talk about a problem with the MMSD or a problem dealing with all the sewage and wastewater, it's everybody's problem here. It's not just the city of Milwaukee. We really are all connected. And it's amazing how many people don't think about the fact that their home and their sewer pipe is part of the problem and also part of the solution. One of the problems that we have right now is how much water is leaking into sewer pipes. And we have spent about $4 billion over the last few decades improving the MMSD system, making it better and making it so that it can handle more water. The communities have spent millions of dollars improving their systems to make sure that water's not leaking into the sewer pipes. But very little work has been done to the laterals, those private sewer pipes that people own that go from their homes or businesses out to the street. So the infrastructure is in good shape from the municipality standpoint, but you're saying there's some failing going on, some cracking, or somehow water's getting in from the residential standpoint? You're as good as your weakest link. And currently, some of those laterals are a problem. There are some that are in very poor shape and are leaking like sieves. And what happens is when the ground saturates from rain or melting snow, water's like electricity. It's gonna take the path of least resistance. If there's a crack in your sewer pipe, Water, when it starts going down through the ground, it's gonna find that crack and it's gonna get into the sanitary sewer system. It's water that doesn't need to be there. We don't need to treat it, it's groundwater. And it's water that can also lead to basement backups and sewer overflows because when you put too much water into a sewer pipe, one of two things happens. It'll start backing up in the system or we can provide relief to that system through an overflow point. Uh, an overflow point is when you hear about untreated wastewater going to the rivers and eventually to Lake Michigan. We have those occasionally because there's too much water in the sewer system itself. And if we don't have an overflow, that water is gonna end up backing up into people's homes, which can still happen in some occasions, even when we're having an overflow. Sure, and nobody wants a backed up sewer in their basement, but getting back to the cracked laterals, I mean, a lateral is probably only about this big. 
a crack in that can lead to that much water overflowing the system? We've done some studies with actual dye testing and with cameras going up into the, the lines and you could find some homes that are leaking 50 gallons a minute. Um, well, and and sometimes the, more than that. You think of the multiplier effect on that. If you Absolutely. have three or four on a street that are leaking 50 gallons a minute, it doesn't take much to fill up that pipe. You know, and not to mention you have some people that have foundation drains connected to that same pipe. Foundation drains, which are the pipes underneath your house that keep your house from being damaged by water that accumulates under your house. Sure, we call that drain tile, and it's an yeah. integral aspect of virtually all construction, especially here in the greater Milwaukee area. But you're saying some of that's actually being tied into the municipal sewer? If you don't have a sump pump at your house, you most likely have a foundation drain that is draining to the lateral, that private pipe that you own. And that's adding a tremendous amount of excess water as well to the sanitary sewer system when it rains or the snow melts. And we have one other issue too, and that is people who have their sump pumps hooked up illegally. If you have a sump pump and you have it hooked up to the floor drain in your basement, that's the sanitary sewer. It's illegal. If you have the sump pump hooked up to a sink in your basement, that's illegal. That sump pump is supposed to come up out of your house and out onto your lawn so that water can drain into the ground naturally, or sometimes they're connected to a storm sewer as sure. well. Or if you don't have a sump crock at all, chances are you have drain tile and it's being tied in. Uh, age of the home, can it happen in any, any age home? The, the foundation drains that are connected to the sanitary sewer system are typically in homes built before 1954. That's when the plumbing code changed and they started requiring sump pumps instead of connecting those foundation drains to the laterals. Okay, you said you've invested a considerable amount of money in helping rebuild the infrastructure. What about from a homeowner standpoint? Is there any financial assistance if somebody's watching today's show and says, boy, I think I have that or I might be contributing to that problem, but it might be quite costly to repair? It is costly, and we recognize that. We recognize the economy is not great, that there are some homeowners that are not going to be able to afford these fixes and these solutions. So we've established a program where we're distributing money to the 28 communities we serve based on a, an equal basis, and it's up to the communities to decide what kind of problems they want to tackle. Do they want to fix leaky laterals? Do they want to go after foundation drains that are adding excess water to the sanitary sewer system when it rains? and also to decide how much of a cost share there is for the homeowner. That program currently we have at about $65 million over 10 years. So bottom line is there is funding there. Good idea for homeowners out there to contact their local municipality? It is up to the communities to decide where the work is going to take place. There's not enough money to do all the homes. This is going to take time. This is going to be a very long-term process, but it's one that needs to occur. Yeah, and the good news is for homeowners, there is a solution to both of these problems or both of these sources. And at the end of the day, if we get it solved, everybody in the greater Milwaukee area will benefit from it. If we want to reduce basement backups. We want to reduce sewer overflows. We had a great year last year. We had one sewer overflow. We captured and treated 99.7% of all the water that got into our system. But that's not every year. We've gotten a lot better. We've gone from 50 to 60 overflows a year before the deep tunnel down to about two and a half overflows per year. We've reduced the amount of water that we have to release to the waterways untreated significantly. And that's fantastic, but I guess it leads me to my next and final question of this segment. We hear at times about the big plume in Lake Michigan coming from this facility. Is there any truth in that? Well, let me show you something right here. We have three rivers. One of them starts all the way almost up in Fond du Lac, the Milwaukee River. The Menominee, the Milwaukee, combines with the Kinnikinick River, and then they go through this channel, past the home bridge, and out to Lake Michigan by the lighthouse. And that is exactly where you see that bloom shot. Well, think about how much water that is screaming down those rivers when you get a lot of rain. Sure, you get a two or three inch rain, that must be a considerable it's amount of water. Billions and billions and billions of gallons of water. Just on our service area alone, the 28 communities we serve, one inch of rain is 7.1 billion gallons of water. Wow. So it is a, a lot of water that comes screaming down those rivers and it's churning the river. We call it scouring, where it's kicking up the loose debris and the mud and silt and sediment that's at the bottom. You also have pollution getting in when it rains. And that is causing a very turbid, muddy water to go out and meet what is usually a blue turquoise clear water yeah, and that contrast in the two colors is obviously very noticeable when we have an overflow 
yes, there is some overflow of untreated sewage in that water, but the vast majority is the excess water, the rainwater that's coming down from those three river systems out to the lake. Well, that makes a lot more sense to me, and I'm anxious to get into the solution to the homeowner problems and how each of us can do our part to really help the community and help the system as a whole. Part of our obligation as plumbers is to protect the resources that we're blessed to have. We're very close to Lake Michigan. That's a valuable resource. We're one of the locations in the world that has that tremendous resource. So we want to make sure when we use water from Lake Michigan to, to run our plumbing systems in our homes or our businesses, we also have to make sure that that water is returned to the lake. Inevitably, it gets treated and returned back to Lake Michigan. And that's very important that we make sure that that resource is renewable and reusable for a long time. Building Wisconsin is made possible by the members of Plumbers 75, proudly serving their contractors and helping build Wisconsin for over 100 years. We all know the most basic form of life requires clean water to survive. On Earth, we need it to drink, cook, clean, and it touches just about every part of our quality of life. Here in Wisconsin, we appreciate the value of clean water even more as we live alongside the Great Lakes. Yet we often forget to think about how water gets to our homes, schools, and businesses, and then safely back to Mother Nature. Where does all the dirty water go? How is it fresh and clean every time we get a glass of water? Who makes this happen? The answer, plumbers. It's the plumbers who are trained, mentored on the job, and have progressed through a five-year education program that takes them from apprenticeship to a master of their trade. It's plumbers who are committed to a career and have been trained to protect the health and safety of our water system and make sure you never have to think about where it comes from and where it's going. Yes, we're fortunate here in Wisconsin to have an abundant supply of clean, fresh water but even more fortunate to have a highly trained and committed workforce to keep and deliver it that way. Plumbers 75, supporting the plumbing trade in Southeast Wisconsin for over 100 years. At Clearview Plumbing, they believe bigger isn't necessarily better. From new construction to remodeling, maintenance or repair, Dennis Nowak and his highly trained crew will get the job done right, on time and on budget. Serving southeastern Wisconsin for over 15 years, Clearview Plumbing specializes in residential and light commercial. Whether they're repairing a clogged drain, replacing a water heater, installing a new faucet, or capping off a drain tile system, Clearview Plumbing strives for excellence in everything they do. Clearview Plumbing and Plumber 75, proud to be building Wisconsin. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com.